Okay, here we're going to do a simple example of why is my exploit not working. I've written my exploit, it should work, but for some reason it doesn't. So for the sake of time, let me just tell you the exploit that we have as written, even though it should, it doesn't work. It's a simple save return pointer overwrite that we'll learn about in class and jumps to ESP, one of the registers. Again, we'll learn about that in class, but for some reason it doesn't work. Before I run it, I'm just going to go ahead and set a breakpoint here. And that's going to pause execution so we can take a look at why maybe it's not working. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this. I come over here, I have hit my breakpoint. So now I can use F7 um, to just run one command at a time. So here's my CPU window. This is what's going to be run so push esp and then return so it's going to send me to the esp register which is where i put my shell code or the commands i want to be executed in this case i just want it to basically put up the calculator so i'll do my f7 f7 and that sends me to the beginning of my shell code i can see my stack here so since i'm using esp for my shell code esp is the top of the stack as we'll learn in class as we do the theory so that's the beginning of our shell code. We can, if we'd like to um, compare it to our shell code we generated here with MSF Venom. I just did simple calculator. It did encode it with something called Shikata Ganai. I had some bad characters that I wanted to avoid, so it did encode it to get rid of those bad characters. Of course, what is encoded must be decoded. So the first thing this thing's going to do is it's going to decode itself. It needs to find itself in memory. So the second instruction here is this FSTENV 28 bytes pointer to ESP minus C. So the stack, as we'll learn, grows up to lower memory addresses. So ESP minus C, so that's 12 in decimal. If you're not good with your hex to decimal conversion, luckily Windows Calculator is great at it, so it's a great tool for exploit dev. So basically what this is going to do, that instruction is going to help us find where we are in, mem in memory, find the shell code so it can decode itself, but it's going to write a 28 byte structure starting at ESP minus C. So ESP minus 12 in decimal. So what we should expect to see just based on logic is, so that's 12 bytes accounted for before we hit ESP, but it's we have 28 bytes we have to write. So we should expect to see these first few lines of our shell code. It's probably going to be corrupted by this FSTE in V. So that instruction will probably corrupt our shell code, and that would be my guess as to why it's not running. So if I do my F7, F7, let that instruction run, watch this stack down here at the bottom right. And indeed we see that these instructions, these first few instructions of the shellcode have been corrupted. And that is why, you know, when we try and run it, we get no calc. So calculator didn't happen. We ended up actually corrupting our shellcode. So let's restart this and see if we can fix it. Our problem is that we're trying to write to ESP minus 12, basically ESP minus C, we're trying to write 28 bytes. So why don't we just, before we let this decode, just get ESP out of the way. What if we could just move ESP so it can write this structure somewhere else out of the way? So I used a little tool called Metasm. We we'll use Metasm a lot in class. Um, again, the stack grows up towards lower memory addresses, so I tried to first subtract from ESP 1500 bytes. That's way more than we need. We're really only overwriting a few bytes of our shellcode. Um, but that turned out to have some null bytes, which were bad characters. So I just did a logical equivalent, add ESP negative 1500, so there were no bad characters there. So I'm just going to grab that. And then I'm going to append it, well, to the beginning of our shell code. So right before our shell code runs, I'm just going to move ESP out of the way. So that 
decoding or finding itself in memory so it can decode itself instruction will not corrupt our shell code so our shell code should remain intact so let me make sure everything's running over here good we're online so let's go ahead and run it and that time we do in fact get calculator so that's what we're going to do a lot of in class we're going to learn the steps to do the exploitation techniques and we're going to look at things like this like why is my exploit not working i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing but for some reason it's not working but we took a deep dive into what was actually going on we did it very quickly of course here we'll go much deeper in class um, but we were able to see what the problem was and what we could do to fix it.